Now at six o'clock, the BBC News with Hugh Edwards and Mike Embley. Mr Blair's plan for solving the health crisis, a direct challenge to doctors. His blunt message, we've delivered the money, now you deliver a better service. Record damages for the little boy paralysed by a speeding car. In the cradle of Christianity, the Pope appeals for peace in the Middle East. Is the bubble about to burst? The internet millionaires counting the cost as technology shares take a hammering. Tonight in the South East, 62 arrests and counting. Police swoop on known racists across London. Bootleggers beware. The government puts up £200 million to catch the smugglers. Good evening. The Prime Minister has taken charge of the massive process of reforming the health service. Nearly three years after taking office and after months of criticism that the government's health policies just aren't working, Mr Blair issued a direct challenge to all NHS staff and attacked the big variation in standards across the United Kingdom. Yesterday's budget, said the Prime Minister, had delivered the extra money. It was now down to doctors, nurses and administrators to rise to the challenge. More details now from our correspondent, Carol Walker. Labour is out to salvage its reputation on the health service. The Chancellor underlined his £2 billion boost for the NHS with a visit to a London hospital. John Prescott pressed home the message at another hospital in Manchester. And the Prime Minister took personal charge of the modernisation drive, saying the government had risen to the challenge of extra funding, the health service had to rise to the challenge of reform. In the Commons, he said there must be new incentives, tougher inspection, an end to old demarcations and more preventive medicine to end the wide variations in performance. And there were tough words for health service staff. Some of these problems will be because of a shortage of staff and equipment, but some will be poor management and inefficient organisation. Some will arise out of outdated demarcations between professionals within the service. Some will be systems failures, some will be professional failures. The Tory leader mocked the statement, accusing the government of abject failure. The need to relaunch the policies on the health service are a clear demonstration that they have failed so far. And in this statement, after three years of mismanagement of the health service, he has the nerve to make a statement about professional failures. What about the ministerial failures in running the health service? Mr Haig accused the government of a corrupt system of appointments based on crony culture after a report criticised the government for packing hospital boards with Labour supporters. The government says they are now more representative of the communities they serve. Ministers are acutely aware that the overall state of the health service is now voters' number one concern. Ministers know pledges of money are not enough. Voters want to see big improvements in their health care. And the government's under real pressure to show results on this key issue, with the next election possible just over a year from now. Carol Walker, BBC News at St Thomas's Hospital in London. Now, the extra NHS money will be available for hospitals throughout the United Kingdom. How they spend it is, of course, crucial to the success of Mr Blair's strategy. Fergus Walsh is at Leeds General Infirmary. Fergus. Well, Hugh, this is the largest trust in the UK. Four and a half thousand nurses are employed here. It's got 3,000 beds, over six hospitals. But like every trust, it had serious problems this winter because of a shortage of intensive care beds and because of the flu. So how does staff here see the way forward for the NHS? At this heart surgery ward, we brought together key figures in Leeds to listen to Tony Blair. The chief executives of the Hospital Trust and the Health Authority welcomed the massive cash injection for the NHS. But how soon will patients see the difference? It takes time, so people have to be patient, but can expect to see improvements right across the board. So waiting times, the range of services and treatments available, all those things will, over time, be possible to improve. But years, not months. That's right, yes. Like all hospitals, the Trust has a nursing shortage, and it's currently looking overseas to fill some of the 400 nursing vacancies here. We have a team at the moment in Singapore recruiting nurses. Uh, we're hoping to attract about 100 um, in total. And that's a short-term measure, but um, in the longer term we've been working with our local university. We want to see people trained in Leeds, staying in Leeds and working in our hospitals. 
That shortage of nurses is frustrating for heart surgeons, who often can't operate because of a lack of support staff. There are 150 patients in this area alone who've waited more than a year for a heart bypass. So while we can provide an excellent standard of care, I believe, we're just not getting the opportunity to do so. Probably in the last number of weeks, we've been down to four of our five operating theatres, and that has meant operations being cancelled. But in the wake of the budget, there's now a real sense of optimism among staff that the NHS is about to see radical change for the better. The mood is a lot better. Um, we know we're actually going to get some more money. We know that uh, the resources are, are going to come in now. Um, we have a lot more confidence in what the government's actually saying to us. So Leeds wants more nurses, more intensive care beds, more money for new drugs. And they can't come a moment too soon. Well, Fergus, I suppose picking up on that theme, the big question for patients is when will they see practical changes from all this money? Well, on things like heart disease, Hugh, it's going to take five or ten years to bring our waiting times for heart bypass surgery down from 12 or 18 months down to the European level of a few weeks. But the government, of course, wants to see results very quickly. That's why it's put this extra £2 billion in from next month. And the first target must be to reach its manifesto commitment of a cutting 100,000 patients off the waiting list. It's got 60,000 patients to go. Now, that's not a target that hospitals are terribly happy with. They don't want to see any more politically inspired targets like that in the next year. But the other main target will be to avoid a repeat of last winter's NHS problems and the cancelled operations and so on. On. And the, there's a real hope here that that will be prevented next winter. Fergus in Leeds, many thanks for that. Well, the health service was at the heart of yesterday's budget, as we know, but the big question being asked by many people today is who is paying for all that extra spending? William Hague, the Tory leader, says it's middle-income families who will bear the brunt, while ministers claim that every family will in fact be better off. Greg Wood has more details. This is a copy of the budget speech delivered by the Chancellor yesterday afternoon, a mere 10 pages. This is the mass of supporting documentation which was unleashed as soon as he sat down. It's in here that the details of the real budget winners and losers are tucked away. Questions to the Prime Minister. In the Dr. House of Stephen Commons this Lady afternoon, the Conservatives attacked the budget for allegedly clobbering middle income families. Will he tell the House how many people will lose the married couple's allowance next month without receiving any compensating children's tax credit? Madam Speaker, there is child benefit that has gone up, and there is the basic rate income tax cut. And, Madam Speaker, the tax burden, this I'm sorry, the tax burden this year is falling according to the figures in the Red Book. So what does the Red Book, the budget bible, tell us about winners and losers? At the top end of the scale, a married couple earning £45,000 a year with two children and a mortgage will be worse off. They'll lose £527 a year through the abolition of tax breaks like mortgage relief and national insurance rises they'll gain £402 through a cut in the basic tax rate and higher child benefit, a net loss of £125 a year. In contrast, a single working mother with two children earning £9,000 a year and living in rented accommodation will be better off. She'll lose her single parent's allowance worth £197 a year, but gain £781 through a combination of tax cuts, higher child benefit and an increase in working families tax credit, a net gain of £584 a year. I wouldn't say he's clobbered the middle classes. Certainly haven't, they haven't moved forward, but on the other hand they haven't moved back very much either. So far as people on lower income is concerned, they have enormous encouragement from this budget, particularly if they have children and particularly if they're trying to get back into work. There is, though, a sting in the tail for the affluent middle classes. Next year sees the introduction of a new child tax credit designed to replace the married couple's allowance. But those earning more than £40,000 a year won't get it. Greg Wood, BBC News. More than £5 million, it's a record amount of damages for a child who in this case was paralysed after being knocked down by a car. A judge in Birmingham said the money was to pay for the constant care that Faisal Luar has needed since the accident. 
The highest award before this was to 17-year-old Helen Edwards, who suffered brain damage during a routine operation and she received just under four million. The biggest ever award was to Martin Bechevel for nine million pounds after a car accident. Faisal was five weeks short of his fourth birthday when he was knocked down by a speeding car. He suffered severe spinal and brain injuries. He's paralyzed from the top of his neck down and needs constant care. His family have been fighting for compensation for six years. They say it is so they can continue to look after their son. You cannot um, compensate um, for the losses that he has suffered. He has lost the use of his hands, he has lost the use of his legs. Uh, and the most important thing is he has lost his childhood. This morning, with his family, he arrived at the High Court in Birmingham for the ratification of the deal that was agreed last week. He may only be 10, but Faisal sat in court with his mother and father as the direction and cost of his life was mapped out. The judge praised his parents, but singled out Faisal for courage, he said, that should fill the whole courtroom with admiration. Faisal's compensation is more than a million pounds greater than the previous biggest payout, but his legal team say it's simply what was required. The award is very large, but Faisal's care is also substantial. His ongoing care every day, 24 hours a day, is substantial, and the size of the award reflects that. The family say they are satisfied with the payout, which will help them deal with the disabilities Faisal has been left with. When he once said to me, Dad, if only I could wipe the tears from my eyes with my own hands, I would be so happy. The family say they are relieved that the legal proceedings are now over and that Faisal can plan his future with financial security. Richard Bilton, BBC News, Birmingham. The search for the killers of Stephen Lawrence, murdered in South London nearly seven years ago, seems to be making new progress. Police have arrested three men and last night Stephen's parents made a new appeal for witnesses to come forward. Police say they're confident that new evidence will bring the killers to justice. Eltham still holds its secrets, but the Metropolitan Police say they will crack this case. Three men have been arrested, two in South London, one in Glasgow, in connection with the murder of Stephen Lawrence near this bus stop seven years ago. Police believe there are other people who know what happened on the night of the killing who could lead them to justice. I'm appealing to um, the mothers, the girlfriends of the boys who were at the time, who would have... On last night's Crime Watch programme, Doreen and Neville Lawrence appealed in particular to particular women who may have heard confessions Neville, to come forward. We know where the evidence lies that can convict people who have never been acquitted of Stephen's murder. This is quite possible to solve this case. It's thought none of the five original suspects are among those arrested. Detectives are reconstructing witness movements using computer technology. The Lawrences are encouraged by police progress. Well, we certainly hope that this will finally be a resolution uh, to seven years of the Lawrences trying to achieve justice for the murder of Stephen Lawrence. Ninety police officers are working on the case. The Lawrences say they won't rest until their son's killers are convicted. Geeta Gurumurthy, BBC News. And 62 people suspected of racist crimes have been arrested in a series of raids across London and the home counties. They've been questioned about a number of offences, including grievous bodily harm and threats to kill. The suspects are not thought to be part of an organised group. The Pope is heading for Jerusalem after spending the day in Bethlehem as part of his tour of the Holy Land. He stepped straight into political controversy when he backed the calls for a Palestinian homeland. He said the people there had suffered for long enough. To Bethlehem by chopper, a journey to the cradle of the faith. He had longed for this trip to an area marked by history and by hate. He emerged painfully slowly and kissed Palestinian soil, a gesture normally reserved for a sovereign state. Israel won't be happy with that. Later, with Yasser Arafat beaming at his side, the Pope showed his affection for these Palestinian children, refugees in a camp. He spoke of how the Palestinians had suffered and were suffering still. Another sting for Israel. Crowds came to hear him say mass in Bethlehem's manger square. 
Christians are a minority here now. The mass was halted for the Muslim call to prayer. The Pope may have come here with a higher purpose, but that won't stop people trying to use every...